S22 Ultra has the best performing phone camera on the market. Now I'm heading downtown Munich to film some historical buildings because they're really beautiful. Most of the time, when you're on some sightseeing, you'll take the photos with the ultra wide angle or with the wide angle because you're close to the subject. But the new Samsung S22 Ultra has the ultra telephoto lens and the photos look 10 times better and different. The only thing you have to take in mind is that you have to be really far away. I'm most probably around 250 meters away from that building there. Okay, that's how it looks with the wide angle, with the telephoto, oh, we have the perfect moment. That was perfect for story. So when you're in photo mode and something interesting happens, just put your thumb on the shutter and don't remove it until it will start recording a video. That's how I managed to capture that thing. Unexpected, but it worked. Now let's move to the telephoto thing. So here is how it looks with the regular telephoto. But with the ultra telephoto, that's what we get. I really like the sign here. First photo mode on the S22 Ultra is amazing and it's really easy to use. It's ideal when you want to freeze the moment, when you want to jump and capture how you are flying in the air. So here is how you do it. You put your thumb on the shutter button and you swipe it down. I hear a police car but I see nothing. Amazing. Every single time I'm talking there are one million cars interrupting me but at the moment I need a car there is none. Okay, here is coming one. One more car and after that when you open your photo gallery the phone automatically created a folder with all the images and when you click on the 100 icon here you can see all the images and then you can choose the best one the burst mode on the s22 ultra is killing really good now i'm by myself it's a little bit boring filming cars so let me show you how to film yourself with that beast here is the perfect composition. We turn on the ultra wide angle lens and we put it on the ground. We position the building on the line of the row of thirds here and I'll be walking that way. But the best part is that we have a remote control hidden in the camera, the pen. So how the pen works? If you press the button twice, the pen works only when the phone is unlocked and I was wondering what is going on. It was working before. So unlock the phone before you use the pen. So when you press the button twice, it switches between the front facing and back facing. You press it once, it takes a photo. Oops, let's move back to ultra wide. And the best part, when you press and hold the button on the pen, it's going in burst mode. So let's jump. I was struggling for 10 minutes and figure out that from far away, there is no chance that you'll be able to activate the burst mode. It works only if you're close to the phone. So downside. The next way to make your photo stand out from the crowd is to use a filter mount. And in that way, you can take slow shutter photos during the day. So here it is how it works. That one is from Moment and it allows me to mount my camera filters on the phone. But you can use any phone filter. We go to the ultra wide angle lens and the first thing is to dial the ISO to just 50. Now the image is really really dark. So we go to the speed and we have to come closer to one second. And now you can see how blurry are the cars. That brings the quality of your photos. I moved inside so I can show you all the camera settings one by one and we can master the camera. So let's start with the selfie camera. Here on the top right we have the enhanced features. Here you can modify it, your face features. So you can start with your jawline. You can see I'm fat now and I'm thin now. It makes my face very very thin. We have the eyes. It makes the eyes bigger. 
And here is the smoothness. It's smoothing your skin. It works exactly like an Instagram filter. I really dislike that feature, so I always keep it off. It doesn't work well for my face. So here we have my filter, so you can create your own filter, or you can use some of the predefined filters. So at the moment you take a photo, the filter will be automatically applied. What I usually do is to take the photo and edit it after that. I usually don't touch those settings. The second icon here is the motion photo. It works exactly like the live photos on iPhone. When I take the photo, the phone will record like a short video. And after that, you can choose the best frame. Next, we have the aspect ratio and 3x4 gives you the best flexibility because with 3x4, you can get all other aspect ratios. You can get 19x16. You can see that it's cutting a little bit from the image. You can do one by one, that's the Instagram square format. But why would you cut the image when you can crop it manually later? And on the left side, we have the 40 megapixel camera. If we go to the main camera, that's where you'll find the 108 megapixels. You are gonna use that option only if it's very sunny outside. If the light conditions are not good, 108 megapixel photo, it will be really crappy. Next to it, you have the timer. That means that at the moment you press the shutter button, the phone will count two, one, go. That's perfect for selfies. And here we have the flashlight auto, always on or off. When you film with the wide angle lens, at the moment you come close to a subject, on the left side, it will pop up an icon. That's the enhanced autofocus. How does it work? So the ultra wide angle camera, it's not only that it has, it's very wide, but it's also the macro camera. The wide angle camera is not macro, but if the auto enhance feature is on, it will use the macro capabilities of the ultra wide and it will just crop. Let me turn it off so you can see the difference. Now I can come relatively close to a subject and you can see that the subject is in focus. My finger is in focus, but everything around is very blurry. If I turn on the auto enhance feature on, that blurriness disappears. It's very helpful if you want to do macro shots, but it's not helpful if you want to get really blurry images. If you tap once on the screen, the phone will start tracking the subject. If you tap and press, the phone will lock the exposure. Now, when the exposure is locked, you have a small sun icon under. When you press it and drag it, the phone will overexpose or underexpose the image. Those are the general settings. Now let's go to the advanced ones. First, we have the scene optimizer. By default, it's turned on. I keep it on. It does a pretty good job to enhance your images. The next thing is the shot suggestions. At the moment you turn it on, the camera will suggest you what is the best composition. So according to the camera algorithm, that is the best composition. Let's try it out here. So it gives you a small hint, but nothing special. Next, we have the picture formats. The first thing is the high efficiency, high for format. The file sizes will be smaller, but it will be harder to open those files. On MacBooks, the hives are really not opening. You can preview them, but Photoshop still doesn't recognize them. The second option are the raw photos. Every single time the phone takes a picture, we'll take two photos. One is the JPEG and the other one is the raw. The JPEG will be around three megabytes and the raw photo will be around 20 megabytes. If you want to do heavy Photoshop of your images, I highly suggest you to use the raw images. They're really helpful. And especially if you're filming sunset or sunrises, you'll be able to recover a lot of the shadows. You'll be able to boost the colors a lot. Save selfies as previewed. That will flip the image at the moment you take the selfie. Just turn it off. It's, it's not worth that feature. Here, that feature is really weird. So you have natural colors or you have bright colors. I have the feeling that I look like that person with the bright colors. So I can just keep it here on natural. The next three features are for the videos, video stabilization, always on, auto FPS, turn off that feature. That means that the phone will decide the frame rates by itself. It's really annoying. Sometimes it's messing up the frame rates and it's hard on post-production. So I always keep that option off. Advanced recording options. So reduce file size, that's for video. We don't use it. HDR plus 10 videos. When you record video, if you want the video to be 10-bit, you have to turn on that option. The 10-bit video gives you thousands of hours more. When you're filming sunsets or sunrises, definitely activate that feature, but you cannot record 4K 60 frames per second, which is a huge downside. 
Zoom in mic, it's a really cool feature, leave it on. At the moment you use the zoom, the microphone is zooming to the sound where the camera is pointing. I have no idea really how they manage to do it, it's amazing. Activate the tracking autofocus, by default is off. Grid lines are a must. Location tags can be really helpful, especially when you're running and gunning and you forget where exactly you took the photos, so that feature is also really helpful. Shooting methods, you have the voice commands if it's activated. At the moment you say cheese, capture, shoot, the phone takes the picture. Unfortunately, it doesn't recognize my accent. It misses half of the times. I'm taking every second or every third photos. Usually I'm sitting and it's like, capture, capture, capture. It's, it's really annoying. I prefer using the pen. Show palm, really cool feature. At, at the moment you show your palm on the phone, it's taking the photo. And it's also starting the video. It works for photo and for video. The next really helpful thing is settings to keep I activated the camera mode and the portrait zoom. Now let's jump to the video mode and check the video camera. And after that we are going to pro mode. On top the first option is the resolution and the frame rate. UHD means 4K, FHD means Full HD. Most of the time I'm recording the speaking videos in UHD 30. If I'm recording a travel video UHD 60 like that I can slow it down two times and I have the best resolution. K24 frames per second is safe for special moments when you want to zoom in your picture, like to create a dolly zoom. Here I have a full tutorial how to create epic dolly zoom with your Samsung. Next we have the aspect ratio, 9 by 16 is the standard one, I never record in any other aspect ratio. If I want to achieve other aspect ratio, I'm doing it on post-production. The button in the middle is the super steady, your videos will be like gimbal. Unfortunately, it's dropping to full HD, you don't have the full resolution and it's cropping in. The next option is down here on the bottom, auto framing. When you activate it, if you're in the frame, the phone will zoom out and will try to position you in the frame automatically. For me, it's a very gimmicky option. I don't know in which case you would do it. And everything else is exactly like in the photo mode. So now let's jump to the pro mode so I show you how it works. To reach the pro mode you have to scroll to the right to the more section. And here the best is to bring them out. So you click and hover and then drag it down to the menu. Press save and now the pro mode is in the menu. The cool part with S22 is that all the lenses are available in the pro mode with s21 only two of the lenses were available there is one downside of the pro mode of the default camera it records the raw files i think in 12 bits but if you download the expert row by the way that application is not available in the store you have to come here to google type expert row Then open the Galaxy Store and you press the install button. That's the way how to install it. So let's open the expert row. The advantage of the expert row is that it's recording 16-bit row images. That gives you a lot of information. So if you go in the pro mode, definitely download the expert row. It works exactly the same. The pro mode you can use in two ways, fully automatic or manually. Now, if you want to use it in the automatic way, you can click somewhere on the screen and lock the exposure. Once you lock the exposure, you can click the circle and drag. And now you have two circles. The first circle is responsible for the exposure. Now when I point it at the sun, it will expose for the highlights. And the second circle is for the focus. If I put it here, it will focus on the tree. If I bring it here, it will focus on the road. So let me change the exposure so you can see it. You can see how it's shifting the focus. If you want to cancel it, just click on the display. And the next thing is the manual mode. There are two settings you have to pay attention. ISO and the speed. The speed is the shutter speed, how fast the sensor is closing. The ISO is how much the sensor is boosting the information that is visible. The higher the number of the ISO, the more noise you have in the image. With the speed, if the speed is too slow, the image is getting blurry. The faster is the speed, the sharper is the image. So when you click on the speed and you can drag it. 
12,000 is really fast, but we forgot to move the ISO to be to the lowest one. So 50, the best quality. 50, 100, 200 will give you the best quality images. Now let's play with the speed. For our light conditions, something like 1 750th of a second is good. So you just have to switch those two settings and your exposure will be perfect. The next very important setting is the white balance. The white balance control what is the value of the white in your image. Watch what will happen when I switch it. So during the day, 5500 is standard one, at night 3000, at sunset 7000. So now we are at sunset, if I want warmer colors, I'll just come here closer to 6, 7000 and see how everything is becoming golden. Let's focus here on the sky so you can see better. Now we can go the other way and we can make the image cold. Now that doesn't look like sunset. The cool part is that when you record raw images, you can change the white balance later on, on post-production. So most of the time I use my white balance on auto. Here on top we have a circle called color tone. With it you control the contrast, the highlights, you can play with the highlights of the image and with the shadows. But if you shoot RAW, you have exactly the same settings, so most of the time I just don't touch them. But if you, if you know a look you want to use, you can use those settings and dial them up. Now let's go to the most interesting thing, the cinematic videos. On Samsung they are called portrait videos or portrait photos, works the same way. Let's switch to me and you can see how Samsung directly found me and blurred the background. The cool part is that there is additional option and you can decide how blurry to be the background in the middle around 4-5 gives you the best results because if you scale it to 8 gives a lot of blur and sometimes looks fake. So something around 4 it's perfect. The other setting you can have big circles so you can see what it's doing it's it's creating something like zoom background video it looks really fake you can see that my ears are not perfect but but for some photos can look really good cover point is making the background black and white so it's keeping the subject in focus and in colors but the background is black and white that's a really cool one i really like it and the next one is my favorite one is the glitch so as you can see I am nice in color and the background is completely glitch on top with the magic wand you're controlling the smoothness of your skin actually that smoothness I like more than the one on the previous camera so something around three four and I'm five years younger the portrait photo exactly the same you have Similar functions here, black and white, backdrop, oh, I'm on a green screen now, that's cool. Low key, that looks horrible, high key, studio, what's the difference between blur and studio? Somehow the light is a bit different. Oh, one thing I didn't show with the pro video, so the slow motion records 240 frames per second, but it's limited only to one lens, if you want to record slow motion with the ultra wide angle lens so you go here to pro video here on top where the resolutions are you have some additional resolutions and you have full hd 120 frames per second and here you can record with the ultra wide and with the wide angle camera i don't know why the other two lenses cannot record slow motion video that's a little bit weird and one tip when you record slow motion always lock the exposure like that, the quality of your video will be better. Thank you for spending the day with me. I hope it was productive. See you in the next one. Bye.